Today, I am excited to introduce you to Toolbox GPT. Now, you might be wondering, with so many applications and shortcuts already available that interact with ChatGPT, why create another one? Well, while each existing solution offers unique features, I found that none of them fully met my needs. So I decided to combine the best aspects of a lot of the apps that I tried, add some of my own ideas, and compile everything into a shortcut that I am so excited to share with you. This is the most complex shortcut that I have ever created, and it took me weeks to build and test. So I am truly happy to finally put it online. While there is an official ChatGPT app for iOS, to use Toolbox GPT, you will need an API token. This is paid, but it's extremely affordable. You do not need the Plus service. You can pay as you go, and if this is your first time signing up, you will even get some free credit. Using the API has several advantages, which I will not go into here. But for Toolbox GPT, not only will you be using this token for ChatGPT, but also, in case you need, for Whisper transcriptions something that I have also integrated in this shortcut. Another API that I have also integrated in the shortcut is 11 Labs, which is an AI text-to-speech voice generation tool. This is not required for the shortcut and you can totally ignore it, but they give you 10,000 characters for free every month. And I think it's an amazing tool. So you have the opportunity to use it here, not for conversations, because for that it will be very expensive, but for whenever you need to read some text aloud, as you will see in a minute. There's two versions of this shortcut. One of them integrates with Bear, my favorite note-taking application, which now even allows you to create markdown tables. So you can use ChatGPT to create markdown tables inside of Bear. And the other version of the shortcut integrates with a free application called DataJar. This is for the people who do not use Bear, and this is just for saving conversations and keeping them in sync between devices. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. All that you need to know right now is that I did not build Toolbox GPT to replicate the official ChatGPT interface, but rather to expand on it and allow it to do so much more. Let's dive right into it. Okay, guys, I'm here in the official ChatGPT web interface. I don't know if you have ever tried to do any internet related action. Like here, I am asking it to give me some items from Hacker News front page. As you can see, the reply is that it doesn't have web browsing capabilities. And that's because I do not have a ChatGPT Plus subscription. Now we go to my shortcut. When you first run it, you have this menu with presets. And this is how it looks for me, but any user can define their own presets. I will tell you more about it later. For now, let's go into this chat option. And I insert exactly the same prompt for it to give me some items from Hacker News. And check it out, I got some results. Non-determinism in GPT-4, most promoted and blocked domains among Kagi search users. Okay, let's click done. Now, I have built in a feature to open the URL that was last accessed by the shortcut. That way, we can always verify that ChatGPT is not making stuff up. So I type O, which is my command, and there we have the site. Non-determinism in GPT-4, we have the most promoted and blocked domains item. Basically, ChatGPT gave me the first five results. But since I'm here, I can say, oh, maybe this sounds interesting. So I can copy the link, click done to go into my conversation again, and ask for a brief summary on this link that I just copied. This time, I will specify for it to use the web command. The web command is what I have built into Toolbox GPT to get internet access. I do not always type this down, but the more specific that you are with your prompts, the more chances there are for this to work. After all, we're using ChatGPT for something that wasn't originally part of it, and I don't want it to make up anything. So we click done, and since it's the first time I access this website, I need to give it permission. And there's my summary. On desktop, you can always open the web browser yourself and leave the shortcut in the background. But this feature is extremely useful on mobile, since you can basically browse the internet, make summaries or outlines, extract key takeaways from websites or articles and more, without ever leaving the shortcut. Now I click done and for saving my conversation, I type a blank space. My conversation is saved. And check this out. There's a feature you can activate where you can continue the conversation after saving. Let's say I will type a thank you. I get a reply. Now I open my saved note with a double blank space and everything is there in there. 
when you trigger your first manual save, as I did in this point, you can continue your conversation and everything will continue to save after that. But there's more. I can click this link at the bottom of my note and choose to continue my conversation with Sync On, which allows me to continue saving automatically. Let me ask a table with healthy meal options for my week. As you can see, here's my reply. Bear is now able to show markdown tables, which opens a lot of possibilities together with Toolbox GPT. Now, since I'm still on desktop, let me show you other ways to control the shortcut. I have this application called PopClip. I use this all the time by selecting text, I trigger it, and I have created this extension, which basically sends the selected text to Toolbox GPT. I can select any preset, translate to Spanish, for example, and my selected text will be replaced by the answer. Or we can do it differently. I can select the text and click the extension while I hold Shift. I can add a custom prompt, let's say, can you make me a poem with the following? And there I got my poem without replacing the text. This means I can select any text and use that as an input for a chat GPT conversation and continue interacting with it inside the shortcut. Another behavior that I have seen by many apps is directly typing the prompt, like how do I say hello in French? Let's trigger the same extension, this time holding command, and I'm not even presented with the menu. This may be faster depending on what you are doing. And if you don't want the text to be replaced, you can hold command and option when you trigger the extension and the answer is placed below. If you do not have PopClip but have Alfred, you can do pretty much the same. You have all the same options available, but for now I will hold command for it to paste the result. If you have better touch tool, I have even made a preset that you can use in the same way. I select the text and I press a keyboard shortcut and I have these options. Let's send the prompt and replace. All of these that I'm showing you are pretty much imitating the behavior of many of the third-party ChatGPT applications out there. But there's more. The way that Toolbox GPT integrates with third-party apps is through something that I call flags. And this opens a new level of possibilities with other apps or other shortcuts. And it also allows for a lot of customization options on how the shortcut behaves for your own case. I can type the flag to default to chat. This allows me to go directly to a conversation without showing the menu. I insert the flag for no prompt or no prefix so that I am not asked for a specific action on the selected text. Then I add the flag for whisper transcription. And whisper transcription is so much better than Siri. Plus one of the advantages is that it automatically detects languages. So I can say something like, from now on, you are a translator between Spanish and English. I want it to answer me back in the opposite language. I select my text and share it to Toolbox GPT. See, it gave me the answer already in Spanish, saying that it understood my request. But now check this out. Since I activated whisper transcription, I can actually dictate something like, where is the closest Walmart? Imagine that you are traveling somewhere and want to communicate using this shortcut. You can do that. You see the answer, and the other person can answer in their language. Lo lamento, no hay ninguna tienda cercana. I'm sorry, there are no stores nearby. Now, let me show you another feature. I can say W, and my dictation mode will go back to normal typing. Just as there are commands for saving and opening notes or opening websites, there's also a command to access 11 labs voices. So I can type M, for a male voice, and it can read the last response. I'm sorry, there are no stores nearby. I can take different actions on the audio file, or I can just continue. For now, let's continue and say, no problem, thanks anyways. I got my translation, and now I will tap F to read it as a female. No hay problema, gracias de todos modos. See, it reads perfectly in Spanish. So with Whisper and 11 Labs that auto-detect languages, you have a lot of options. This is great for anyone trying to learn different languages, for example. Toolbox GPT can extract text from images and use it as input for a conversation. The same as text from PDF files. You can share websites from Safari. You can even share a list of URLs. And here's something important. ChatGPT has a limit of how much text you can feed into it. 
Here you see that the total is 19,000 characters, which is way too much, because of course, these links that I selected have a lot of text. Let's say that I click down here, and I am presented with my menu of presets. I can click any of them, and then I will be presented with this option to auto-split the text. You have the option to accept this, and in the settings of the shortcut, you can actually select the amount of characters where you want this to happen. But basically, this allows you to split all of the text in smaller chunks that will be processed independently by ChatGPT. The results will be merged before being presented back to you. This is great if you want to fix grammar on a lot of text, translate, summarize, or something along those lines. This way you can avoid hitting the limits of ChatGPT and also avoid shortcut timeouts. Now let's briefly look at the menu of presets. I have the shortcut on my home screen as if it were an app. If I tap it without sharing anything to it, I see the menu right away. Now, first of all, what is really special about this is that these ChatGPT presets are a combination of system roles and prompts. With system roles, you are shaping the identity of this character that you will be talking to. And with preset prompts, you can quickly send your first instruction for a given text without waiting time. But if I scroll down a bit more, you can see that I have left room for some actions that are not chat GPT related. I can use a whisper transcription by itself, for example, or I can use the 11 labs voices by themselves. And there's also room for presets that are simple text transformations. If you know how to use regular expressions, you can make similar presets like this. If you do not know, you can actually ask ChatGPT for some help on that. This is more of an area for power users. These presets allow you to make use of the native capabilities of the Shortcuts app. Oh, and actually, there's more that I haven't covered. Like, you can start a conversation by entering a flag before your first prompt directly to change your ChatGPT model for this interaction. You can see here that I am on 8,000 tokens of context, which is the one for GPT-4. This that I'm showing you is just an overview, but actually, there's much more that you can do. There you have it, guys. As I mentioned earlier, Toolbox GPT is designed for customization at its core. If you have ideas for additional features, I'm confident that you can tweak it to your liking. But if you need help, do not hesitate to reach out. I am looking forward to improve and expand this tool. In my case, I have also integrated a couple of other apps to work together with the shortcut. One of them is PastePal. PastePal is a universal clipboard manager that lets you access everything on your clipboard across desktop and iOS. It keeps a very easy to search history of all the text that you copy, and it even has a shortcut action, making it a very good backup for my conversations in Toolbox GPT. Another application that I use with Toolbox GPT is Prismo Go. This is an OCR app, which is superior to Apple's default function for extracting text from images. If you are interested, I can share with you how I integrated this with the shortcut. Now, while Toolbox GPT is intuitive to use, it does come with a lot of settings to customize according to your needs. So I strongly recommend reading all the guide on my page where you can download the shortcut. Without understanding the guide that I wrote for you, you probably will not be able to make the best out of this tool. And I think it's also important that you know some of the limitations and possible workarounds. Trust me, it's just a matter of reading and understanding a bit how all of this works. Once you get the hang of it, you will find it a valuable addition to your workflow. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. But before you do, please ensure that you have read the guide on the site. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope that you find Toolbox GPT as useful as I do.